now that we have successfully created our piano, or at least it looks like a piano, uh, I think it's time that we move on and we refactor a little bit. And also we should think about how do we actually find out what the different node names are. So how do we tell the browser that this is a C, this is an E, and so on and so forth? Because right now we don't have any knowledge about that. But first I think we should refactor a little bit because I noticed here um, we have some things that we are repeating ourselves here a bit. Uh, first of all, you're creating octaves here. That's all great. Um, but we are also creating white keys and then we are creating black keys. And many of the same things, we're setting this the same kind of attributes, the X attribute, the width, the height. We're doing that on both the white keys and uh, black keys. So that tells me that probably there is room for some refactoring and some easier, more simple way to do this, to split this up into other other functions or other methods here on our app object. So let's see if we can do something like that. First of all, up here in create octaves, we are creating an SVG element. We're adding a class and we are doing different things with it here and uh, setting the, the translate, the transform translate to, to move it over by the width of the octave for every octave that we have. But, um, Maybe we can create another function down here that can do that for us. So it becomes a little bit more clean. So down here, I will add another function or method, and that will be create octave. Okay. Well, we can basically just copy some of the stuff from up here. So we want to have the octave and we want to create the svg element which we can do with the helper function helper method that we have on the utilities object so we can um we can copy this one we can actually copy this one as well and we can let's just copy all of the stuff that we have right here so i'm going to copy this and put it down here clean it up a little bit here and then let's think about what we need to, to in order to create an octave. Well, actually, all we need is uh, the octave number. What, what octave do we want to create? So let's receive this here. I will call that octave number. Um, and first, we want to create an octave, which is just a simple creation of the G tag here, the SVG tag. And then we want to add the class list octave. And that's all we want to do. Uh, now and then we want to set the attribute transform translate as well um, but here we don't have i because we are not inside a for loop the for loop i think should still run up in the um, in the main method in the setup piano method but here we have the octave number that's the one that we are passing in and that will eventually be i inside our for loop that will pass here and then we will uh, use it here instead of i so we can just use octave number here instead. But one thing we must not forget, which I almost forgot, is to return the octave that we are creating. Otherwise, nothing's going to happen. Okay, I'm going to save that. And then up here, up above, we're going to change some stuff as well. Because we don't need this one anymore, we're already taking care of that in our method that we just created. We don't need to add a class because we're doing that as well. And we don't need to set the attribute here as well. But we still need the for loop because we want to run this new method here, create octave method a bunch of times, the number of octave times, just like we did before. We're just cleaning it up a little bit so we don't have so much stuff in the setup piano to take care of. I'm going to make a constant here, and that's going to be octave again because we want to create an octave still. So what I call it, what it is. I'm going to set that equal to this because this is the object that we're currently on, this, the app object, which where we also um, created this method here. So we can just use the, this keyword and that will be create octave. And we can just go ahead and pass in i to it because that's going to be octave number one, two, three, four, and five, six, however many octaves we have. So it's gonna get this octave here and uh, I don't really think we have to do more than that. Let's try and test it. Gotta save this, gotta go to the browser and we can see it still works. Let's check if we have any errors in the console. Everything looks fine. 
So now we have taken care of that. We have moved that into another function. So that looks a little bit cleaner. We also have these add white keys to octave and add black keys to octave, but maybe we can make another method that can take care of both of them. So let's think about that. We have two different kinds of keys. We're still creating rectangles for both of them. We're giving them a, a class name of white key and black key. So that's those are two different things that we're doing with it. We are also giving it a different uh, position, of course, but um, the width is different and the height is different. But other than that, it's basically the same thing that we're doing. So right down here under create octave, I think we should make a create key method. And we want to think about what we want to receive into this uh, method. So what we need to accept into that method is uh, a class name, which in this case is white key. Here it's black key. And we need to accept the width and a height. And then the exposition, we will take care of that up here still. We are going to pass an object as an argument to this uh, method. Because I know we're going to do that, I would like to extract the names of, of those. And I can do that by just um, doing this like an object syntax. So I'm going to write class name because I know that's going to be one of them. And with, if I can spell it correctly, I cannot. Okay, that's better. And height. Because then I can uh, go ahead and I can use the, the class names directly here. I could also just accept the object name. Then I had to for every every single time I want to use this class name width or height, I have to type out the name of the object and then dot notation and then the class name and, and so on and so forth. But this is a little bit easier. I can I have direct access to the to these properties as uh, variables in uh, inside this method. So first we want to create a key. That's the first thing we do up here. We uh, create an SVG element. So I'm just gonna go down here and type it out. We need a constant and we need to call it key. We don't need to call it a key, but that's a pretty nice name for it. And then we are going to create an SVG element on this uh, helper method here, which is create SVG element. And we know that it's a rectangle that we want. So now we're getting that. And um, we also have to add something to the class list because we do that up here. Uh, white key and black key and we can do that pretty easily we can just take the key and class list add and we're going to add the class name that we're passing in inside this object so now that is taken care of then we want to set the height and the width attribute let's start with the width so key set attribute and we want to set as i said the width and we want to set it with the value of width that we're passing in. So now we have used this one, as we can see. The next one is going to be almost the same. So I'm going to copy it. And we want it to be the height. And we want to set it to be the height that we pass in. OK. And then, of course, we want to return this key and save it. So up here, we're still going to keep the loop. We're just going to use the newly created method to create the white key. Um, and we're still going to call it white key. And we're just going to delete this stuff here. And then on this object, we're going to create key. And then we're going to pass it the stuff that we, uh, what we want. And that's going to be an object to begin with. And inside this object, we have a class name. So we can type a class name. And this class name is white key. So, so now we can get rid of this one. And then the next thing we're going to add is our width. So width, it's going to be 80. Okay, so now we can get rid of this. And the next thing is going to be the height. That is going to be 400. So we can get rid of this. OK. We still have to set the attribute of the white key position because we have to increment that um, with 80 for every time we run this for loop. So we cannot move that anywhere. But that's just fine. 
So if I just clean up a little bit here, remove some lines, let's see if it if it works. It should. I'm going to save this and go back to the browser and I can see it still works. We still have this beautiful piano here. Let me just test it, you know. Let me try to add four octaves instead and yeah, it still works. So that's good. Now we're going to have to do the same thing for the black keys. And uh, yeah, that's basically going to be the same thing. I am going to copy this one from the white key just for the sake of laziness. And I'm going to add black key because that's the class name we want to add to it. And the width is going to be 40. And the height is also going to be different. That's going to be 250. So we can get rid of these two lines and we can get rid of the one that adds the class of black key. And we're setting the attribute here and we still need to check um, where it is located. So where to put the, the different black keys, the spacings between um, the D sharp and uh, the F sharp black keys. So I'm going to save this and go back to the browser and see, whoop, we have a problem here. So I must miss something here. Of course, it's called <laughs> black key. And of course, we don't need this one anymore. I'm going to save that and go back and we can see that it works. So that's awesome. Now we have refactored it a little bit, but we can probably do more. Uh, but for now, I think this is fine. I was actually going to show you how we can calculate the note names so we know what note names correspond to which key on the keyboard on the piano. But uh, I think this video is better off on its own. So this is going to be a short video. And in the next video, we are going to have a look at how we can create the note names dynamically, or at least some of the note names so we can add them to the keys. See you in the next video.